Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel and this series where we take electronic circuit concepts and demonstrate them in a practical manner to make what seems as an abstract idea in the field of electrical and electronics engineering and hopefully make it more easy to understand. This video aims to take a brief look at inductors, more importantly what they are, how do they work, the unit of inductance and the different applications for inductors. Before we get on with the video, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through subscribing and sharing it with anyone you think would find this video useful. And I've also recently joined Patreon, so if you'd like to acquire the notes behind these videos, you can get them through Patreon. The link is in the description below. Also, this video assumes that the viewer has knowledge in calculus, more specifically what derivatives are and integ integrals. However, I try my best to explain it in a manner that is digestible by everyone. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about what inductors are. An inductor is basically a passive two-terminal electrical component that stores energy in a magnetic field when current flows through it. Just like a capacitor stores electrical charge on its plate, inductors store energy in a magnetic field. And it does that through resisting changes in current. And an inductor is typically an insulated wire that is wound into a coil. According to Ampere's law, if current flows through an inductor, magnetic flux will form and it will point in the opposite direction of the current flow. And looking at this inductor, we can see that there is a cross-sectional area to it, which we will denote by the letter A. And we the inductor has a length denoted by the letter L and the number of turns that the wire has been wound up in an inductor into a coil is denoted by the letter N. So we can calculate the magnetic flux generated by the current flowing through this wound up coil by taking into consideration the cross-sectional area into the number of turns, into the current flowing through, and into the permeability of the material on which the coil is wound. And it is typically either air, so there's nothing underneath the coil, or iron. And divide that quantity with the length of the inductor. The voltage on the inductor can be calculated according to Faraday's law by taking the change in this magnetic flux. Because any change in the magnetic flux produces a self-induced voltage. So taking the derivative of the magnetic flux into the number of turns gives us the voltage. And when we take the derivative of the magnetic flux, what we, what we are doing is we are taking the change in the magnetic flux into consideration. We can see that a time varying magnetic field induces a voltage that is also proportional to the rate of change of current that produces, produced the magnetic field in the first place. Inductance can be found by substituting the permeability into n squared a over the length with L. So basically the inductance is nothing but the permeability into the number of turns squared into the cross-sectional area over the length of that inductor. Therefore the voltage is proportionate to the change in current into the inductance. And hence we've found the inductance which is the result of the induced magnetic field on the coil, which is determined by several factors, as the equation implies, such as the shape of the coil, the number of turns and the layers of the wire, the space between the turns, the permeability of the core material that the wire has been wound upon, and the size of the core, which is the length of the core. 
And the unit for inductance is Henry, which is equal to 1 Weber per ampere. And the symbol for the inductance is the letter L. And the typical values for inductor ranges from 1 microhenry to about 1 henry. There are four common ways to draw an inductor in a schematic or a circuit schematic. You have the air core inductor, which has, which, which has air as its core, the ferrite core inductor, the iron core inductor, and the variable inductor. So air core inductors are used when the amount of inductance required is low. And iron core inductors are made, are made up of an co iron core. And they usually have a high power and high inductance value. Of course, there are other ways of drawing inductors in a schematic, and that depends on the type of inductor that the specific circuit is using. But the most common is the air core inductor symbol. So you can keep these symbols as reference for yourself when looking at different schematics that contain different types of inductors. Now, what are the different applications of inductors? Inductors can be found in different types of applications, starting with transformers, where they can be found, found and seen in power transmission systems. And transformers basically are devices used in power uh, transmission to either step up or step down voltage. Also, you can find inductors used as relay switches, which from the, from the name, it behaves as an electrical switch. As you can see from the GIF that I've created, with the use of an inductor coil in the switch, a magnetic field is produced wherever the switch comes in contact with the flow of current. Also, you can find inductors used in filters in combination with capacitors and also in induction motors where the shaft in the motor will rotate due to the presence of a magnetic field produced due to the alternating current that's flowing through the induction motor. Thank you for watching this video and if you found it useful, consider subscribing to my channel or if you'd like to support me, you can do so through Patreon, which you can find in the description below. Stay tuned for the next video and as always, thank you for watching.